Welcome everyone to Artivism, the Power of Art for Social Transformation. This session is being recorded, so if you do not want your image on screen, you can turn off your camera. Uh, today we have with us Felipe Vega, who is zooming in from Costa Rica. Felipe is a researcher, an educator, an artist with a passion for blending science, art, and community engagement. From an early start and as assistant professor for international ecology programs in Corcovado, Costa Rica, he has evolved over 16 years to embrace diverse fields, science, math, arts, engineering, and the English language. During an internship at the National Psychiatric Hospital, Mr. Vega developed workshops in garden and logic therapy and was trained in math and science gifted programs for over six years, he has led a harmonic science platform at TEC University, exploring music through nature and everyday knowledge. Currently, Mr. Vega conducts music therapy programs at Aldeas SOS's Green Classroom and Casa de Luz programs, focusing on abandoned youth. Through the power of music, these workshops provide inspiration and healing, aligning his belief in the harmony of science, art, and community. Welcome, Felipe. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Artie, and thank you, uh, Artie Wisdom team, uh, for having me here. It's an honor uh, to have you on, in this talk. And, well, let us start. Um, hello, Carolina. Here, let me share a screen with you. So the not often talked um, topic of a harmonic nexus is one of the um, calls to action that I make in, in my work. So um, I found through the years that a harmonic paradigm is a easy way to understand nature, to understand physics, lives, mathematics, and um, music all of which were uh, told to us that we're there far away and we're here, right? Oh, yes, Michael Jackson's the great artist, but who are you? Okay, so I would like to start with a nice question that I had once uh, in my mind for many days, and it was, who is the teacher? This is one of those Zen koans that ask about, you know, um, spirit knowledge or who is the teacher for my curious mind to say God was the teacher was very simplistic in many terms. So I, you know, embarked on a journey of trying to find out the the answer to the to the Quan. My best friend, um, very intuitively says, oh, baby, this is so easy. We all are. And that's my belief. Nowadays, I think that we all are. So the first in the first part, I would like to to honor and gratefully, you know, pay and respect to all of those who have been my teachers in life. Um, yes, from my parents to mentors in life. I'm not going to mention them all because it will be, you know, um, mentioning all day. But um, some people have been very, very transformative in my journey. And one of them was my uncle who taught me the ecology language and introduced me to this um, knowledge of, of the forest when I was a kid. Uh, we used to go on expeditions um, to find butterflies or snakes and frogs and photography. We used to go with people who later became directors of the university. And that was very transformative. When I entered school, at the age of four, I was already, um, you know, an uh, avid reader. I loved encyclopedias and, and studying. But when I finished my high school years, at the age of 17, I wouldn't read not even the summary of the book that they asked me, right? That's why, you know, I remember some people, only a single talk with Mr. Fernando Contreras once changed my life. He, he gave me the idea of coming back to reading. And this opened my channels again to this love for cosmology and philosophy, which was not exactly in my curriculum, right? Because we are very um, submitted by curriculum. So 
Well, some of my great teachers were Marianela Navarro from the University of Costa Rica. I learned science, uh, natural sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, and I had many, many great teachers um, um, of of the of the several universities I have been involved with. So some of them, like Patricio Torres or Luis Guillermo Coronado, really changed my my aspect of, of seeing things in a harmonic paradigm. Okay, I also would like to thank, for example, Frank, who is present here, and Don Orlando, who is present here. Uh, thank you for all the support, and you have been great um, teachers and as well, you know, mates in, in the journey, Bonilla and Jose Carmona, you know, um, many more, many more. I cannot name them all because that would gives us all, all take us all day so i wanted to remind that classic phrase of isaac newton if i was able to see beyond it was because i was standing on the shoulders of giants so it is to pay homage to those people who have showed me a great um passage in life thank you okay let's get on to it because at some point, it was very interesting to me to find out that across epochs and continents, everyone spoke of this celestial narrative of music. The Greeks particularly called it the music of the spheres. And it was related to the sound of all the cosmic symphony. So Pythagoreans were aware of this uh, connection between the tones of the lyres they they tuned and the, and the cosmic uh, universe. This we also find in the ancient Chinese music medic medicine system of five elements. Um, they also uh, worked with the cycles of nature. And in the ancient India, we find um, they had this concept as well with Sage Narada and his planetary Veena, which was his instrument of of planetary travel as they speak, you know. We also have this in Egypt and the Mayans. The, the concept of muralism is very important and very interestingly, they um, also talked about it recently in the channel. Um, this this we, we see in the bottom part are the murals of Bonham Pack and they show Mayan, Mayan priests or Mayan interpreters of music um, with big uh, trumpets that are similar to the didgeridoos we find in, in the um, Aboriginal Australian uh, cultures. So if you go anywhere in the world, you will find that this is a cultural narrative and that at some point in history, it was kind of forgotten or, you know, um, it has evolved in certain manners. So um, when I was in university, I found that Pythagoreans were amazed with this um, cause and effect relationship between the length ratio of the musical strings and harmony. And this, this led them to very profound knowledge of nature. They even thought that uh, whole numbers explain, govern, and even more so produce the phenomena of nature. So it was a change of paradigm when I found about this because my scientific upbringing was not very comfortable with the with the with the musical, artistic, um, social sphere until I realized that my love for numbers or or drawing would uh, get me to an easy path towards that uh, knowledge. So if we go and trace back history a little bit, we will find that Pythagoreans and ancient Greek philosophers were very aware of this concept. It was also present in Ptolemy Whenever we see Ptolemy and say, oh, geocentric thought, but as I read Ptolemy and I found out that he spoke about embryology and very complex topics, um, 
I asked myself, well, is this really just programming I got in school and, you know, criticizing some of the elements that that he presented? Because um, it seemed to me he he he's the great wise um, uh, presenter of, of science of his times. Then we also have uh, Kepler, for example. He represents the scientific revolution and his work is done in the Harmonices Mundi, five books that speak about harmony and the planetary harmony that is all-encompassing. Then we also have Descartes and Mersenne. Well, they changed the paradigm, but they were also students of music and very aware of it during their, during their time. And so it's in, it's in this point that alchemy shifts and a harm, well, let's say holistic paradigm um, changed to science, right? Newton is also one of the marks of that process. He he used alchemy in his in his writings, but his recognized work is is in the uh, in the physics um, part, right? We are not um, usually uh, told about his other parts of work, but they are very interesting. As his very um, book of optics is expressed in the means of scales of music, such as the Dorian scale, which Plato said was to empower the soul. And so it has been through this kind of knowledge that it, it, it when we simply when we simplify this scale, then we come to pentatonic scales. This is the classic point of view. We come to music and they say, oh, let me show you do, re, mi, fa, so, okay? And then we say, we have simplifications of the scales and complexification of the scales. But if we go to ontology, we will find that all world music is made up of pentatonic scales. They are first. So, parenthesis, but when I when I grew up as learning, you know, Spanish, my mother language, this was very natural. You first listen, then you speak. Afterwards, you read, and finally you write. While learning in English, um, it was harder because they presented first reading and writing, and then speaking, right? So um, when I used to work in Corcovado, speaking speaking became um, easy to me because I had to forget um, incorrect ways of saying things. I didn't care about that because maybe it was a matter of life or death that they didn't go into the water infested of crocodiles, right? So um, I would have just to communicate the basic things. And then, you know, being around so many scientists at the moment gave me good skills of, of learning the technical language. So in music, if we go ontologically to develop those um, ideas in order, then what I have found is that people are able to improvise their language of music and they are able to make them theirs instead of just repeating it from a piece of paper, which many people uh, end up after full education and university having problems to develop, you know, their, their expression abilities and the sort. And my call is that it was, or it is due to educational um, curricular problems or misdesigns that we have. If we correct some of those orders, then um, it's easy and it's for everyone. So um, I'll try to bring those points again to, to complement many of the ideas that we would um, talk about. So well, um, then we have the modern times, like people who presented uh, quantum physics like Planck, for example, used a harmonium and a chorus. 
to present those concepts. We also have Mandelbrot and his fractals, which are a more even complex map of harmony and that we were able to explore better with the computing power uh, we got you know, from the 70s up to this point. So look at that question there. What if the holy grail of natural science, um, which originally the word science meant knowledge, now, I don't know, and mathematics originally means all of which can be known. So um, what if you know that it's science and is, is the mathematics of, of music? Because we can tell by most of the great discoveries of, of history of science that music was there. It was in the midst of all. The tip of the sphere for neurosciences is as well music. So let's go back to the point in which all, you know, kind of failed because there was this um, great knowledge the ancient Pythagoreans and Egyptians and Mayans had and was lost in some point. This uh, historical record um, points to the 13th century and we have Pope Gregory's inquisition of the calendars and harmonic sciences. So Do anciently were, was called Ut and this um, Ut went laxis, Re, Sunari Fibris, Mira Historum, Famolitorum, Solve Poluti, Labi Reatum, Saint Johannes, where the names of the notes came from uh, was um, a removal of the pentatonic um, knowledge that was so common at that time. So um, that ended up with symbol numbers being demonized, you know, people having trouble there, like um, people presenting harmonic sciences will have um, many problems such as Galileo or such as Giordano Bruno. We know that these were the classic cases back in the, in the time. So, um, more than a millennium has passed of um, inquisition of that kind of knowledge and science evolved separately to avoid conflict with the church. And there we, we find absence of harmonious knowledge in modern education in many aspects. And this you know, um, gives us uh, a reason of our uh, unsustainability uh, in society. Okay, so um, we have uncovered a part of the historical fusion of mathematics and music. I think that it is very clear that it's very intertwined. So um, let's try to explore how this language, um, we may use it to change our perceptions, our perspectives, help other people and, and you know, share the word of, of this um, simple way of seeing things that at the same time gives us a true harmonic meaning. So music always evokes emotions. It is um, directly related to emotions scales or chords or sounds um, represent these emotions. And therefore we, we find that it is also very, um, well, potential of healing we have a lot, right? Because it is not always there like a consonant chord. We also have dissonance and this is part of society. But if we pay attention to history, we will find out that music was there in every revolution. It was there in, in every birthday, in every moment since we were born until we die. They sing the gospel songs and stuff. There is always music around us. And so we have some images here of uh, Gandhi. Also, he, he used it, he, um, aside with silence, which is this great also spiritual tool. Um, music also also orderly gives us 
presence and gives us capacity to to shift our societal means and then i think that i've made the point clearly that this is beyond entertainment right because we are used to believe that music is on the industry or um we are programmed to to believe that music is the music industry and as we can see musicality is is more than that it's everything we are musical beings but some of us make music and the difference between musicality and music is that originally it's a cosmic term musicality is a broader term and music it's the social definition that we give to it so we also have an example of Planck and Einstein there they had this moment in which linear uh, systems were difficult to to integrate without having a, a good uh, developed insight of musical creativity so um I trust that this is a very inspiring narrative to people who have their musical abilities or and they perhaps do not um, explore the, the research or scientific part. And to, to these people, I think that music is like an answer without questions. So if you don't ask properly, similar to AI, if you don't ask properly, it will not give you a, an answer full of meaning, but if you ask properly, it will sure give you an answer full of meaning. And this is key, you know, asking the key questions is a great um, point of view to, to think about the societal shift. So uh, having a harmonious paradigm gives us capacity. It gives us the capacity to to relate ourselves to infinity. And therefore, we can also mirror those patterns of natures. And this is how we how we dance the, the play of our lives, right? Being um, vibrating uh, bodies of, of action and changing our, our moments. So <laughs> this helps a lot to solve many life problems. Whenever you find creative solutions, um, believe it or not, I sometimes um, think with my guitar and that's something that the harmonic keep um, also is about, right? Having um, mnemotechnics to to use this as a, as a, como es un ordenador de información? As a computer. It's an ecological computer that we can use. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a key point of the nexus and it is about the golden ratio. So the nexus between um, image composition and audio composition is proportion. And proportion in the, in the means of math and arts, uh, we find that the most basic uh, way to, to explore it is the Fibonacci sequence and the golden rage. So um, it's in everything. Our hands have a spiral. Our ears are a spiral. The solar system is a spiral. Galaxies are spirals. Atoms are spirals. So as Mandelbrot said, in every scale, we find resonant patterns of fractals. And these patterns are the same. Tones are tones, volumes are volumes. And we have different bands of frequencies and bands of visual light and bands of acoustic um, energy, but they are all part of the electromagnetic spectrum and behave similarly. So music is, is a great mirror for nature. And well, my call to action is to spread the word because everyone um, should be aware of, of harmonic knowledge. 
it was it was removed even from the days of the week for example in spanish lunes means luna or day of the moon martes is day of mars miércoles is day of mercury jueves is day of jupiter viernes venus saturday it's very easy right it's a sabado and then sunday it's very easy to know it's the day of the sun, but in Spanish it's Domingo because it was dominated as well, you know, calendars and music in the same epoch. So nice calendars. You you can use, for example, the Mayan calendar. It's a fascinating tool, right? Having your own types of calendars also help a lot, right? Changing the harmonic um, calendar gives us perspective because as we were mentioning before, there are cycles of, for example, the cenital sun we have here in Costa Rica is very hot today. And these cycles present us the full spectrum of cosmic, um, you know, ideas. So um, in the in the means of of making it happen, to get there to this um, harmonic paradigm, I have methods of teaching piano, guitar, ukulele, many instruments that can be seen through simple matrices, colors, and, and numbers will give us the key. And five forms will, will develop into great knowledge that you can use professionally. And my students have been studying for many years, almost all what, seven, eight years now? Mm -hmm. So we tested enough to see that it, it gives good um good skills. People of every of every field of knowledge are welcome. And so we can use educational um theory very well. Like um they said students bring 50% and teachers 50%. This is not very um you know, uh, used in in master classes and the sort. But in my class, I receive pe people from all sorts of um, of professions. So, for example, psychologists, I tell them, well, okay, we can uh, foster focusing skills through the use of our instrument and practice. And for example, um, the the periodic table of elements when we have a chemical engineer it's a it's a harmonic arrangement and if someone from the branch of physics and come in, comes in we have the super string theory someone from you know um mother home 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 mother uh, comes in we have um nutrition is also part of this harmonic um paradigm so we have different colors we'll give you different nutrients and we can create chords that um, prepare the harmonic worldview which is what what we claim for a harmonic worldview so projects have have come through the years um frank frank has taken us to um reforma which is the, the penitentiary uh system in Costa Rica and we have worked there with Juan Carlos um he he this these members uh guns and and armory and makes it into pieces of art this is very inspiring work and he also inspires the inmates of prisons to to change and the the music uh workshops that Fran and and Bonilla worked there um made possible the, the the first festival of of music inside one of the prisons in Costa Rica. And very, very nice to see people change their attitudes in the in the workshops. We have also done workshops with kids. People all ages are welcome to to everyone loves music. It's natural, right? Um Bonilla is one of those great teachers in life that has uh, shown us the past, right? He's um, older than us in like he's 20 years. Like he's my my big brother, then then Frank. And then 
we well we've made um lots of 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 friends in that in the path. So then later on, I also uh, learned Luthery. Luthery is great because you can also um find means of of teaching um architecture, mathematics, science, and reviving an art that is almost um extinct because of industry. And so um I I've been uh, researching on the possibility of merging the complex plane of mathematics and the luthery. And so this project um has been very interesting in in the aspect of of opening up the the spectrum to to the possibilities that music gives us, right? So uh, this was 17 year old uh fairly here holding a, a little um hawksbill turtle and it was trapped in a net. I cut it loose and let it free. It was very nice. That's Corcovado National Park. It's the best place on earth, in my opinion, personal opinion. Maybe maybe wrong, but um you're all welcome to to come to to visit. It is one of the, according to Najio, the biologically most intense place on Earth, and it holds big um, percentage of biodiversity. Very nice. Well, these are some of the other things I do research. Um, I love uh, butterflies and musicology. Biomusicology is one of my favorite topics. And so I've been researching on the patterns that um, front wings have and mimic, they mimic snakes um, very interestingly. I've also researched on um, the names of the butterflies, the muses, uh, are the exact names of butterflies. And I so said to myself, well, hold on. This is not like poetry, right? Because we were talking about alchemy and all of that, but it, it does have a scientific meaning, right? So I researched about it and it was the very same Linnaeus. I don't know how you say this in English. Carl von Linn, the guy who invented taxonomy um, or who is accredited with the sort. He was the one who gave the names of the muses to those butterflies that I studied when I was a little kid in the mountains of Costa Rica. And Melpomene, was very special. Heliconius melpomene was a very special um, species because when I was a little kid, I couldn't pronounce it. So I would go and say melpone mene mene me. And it was, a, you know, that was my my nickname when I was a little kid. And um, we we studied butterflies in the in the forest. Well, um, I've also done some writing recently in songs, poems, but all of these topics I very fast uh, go through are, you know, are worth um, saving, you know, the time and, and going one by one. So we it really amplifies the spectrum. Well, then this is the Cuban tres I, I, I made and um, I've been studying with Guzman uh, guitar uh, making from, from Costa Rica. He's a very prominent uh, guitar maker. So um, we, we are still in the, in the pro production of this um, fractal guitar that um, comes from the very, very uh, Mandelbrot set, um, set on the, on the full architecture of the instrument. This is interesting. Even uh, Mr. Richard Merrick, um, author and an in engineer, who taught me how to to present some of the Julia sets in the in the chromatic scale, he he told me, "Well, when you have it ready, please please email me because I want to see." It. Okay, I also do some some painting and drawing. I think this is the sister of music, and this is interesting because. We are not um, normally told about this, right? How the tones and the volumes and the lights and the scales are exactly the same. And so 
it's something that we try to use. For example, look at those ukuleles. They are um, inscribed with uh, stickers that show a chromatic um, structure. So we study the scales and in this way, we make it easier. And also you will have many artists come about and say, well, you know, I was thinking on the color blue when I wrote the song, but and there we have a, a scientific uh, way of seeing it. I sometimes uh, write some songs, I scarcely, but sometimes present myself. And there um, last year, we produced this um, piece of harmonic kipu that um, we sent to to the artivism. Um, it was a fashion wearable wearable fashion for a purpose uh, events, and this was very nice. I I used the um, the scales of music in this 12, 12 tone harmonic kipu is the model of a piano and the and its scales. So. Um, this also comes back to the notion of using ecological computers. This is the this is the house of light and the green classroom in Aldea SOS where um, Frank and I teach uh, music workshops. And this is Don Elio as well. He's the director of the of the place and great. Um, he he's our master of anthroposophy. Great, I love those wide aspects of knowledge and it's very integrative so let's try to you know reflect on this and use it for ourselves try try going back to your own neighborhood to your own life and seeing how do you envision this harmony how do you how do you use it and and, and practice it um, this is my my workshop at at um at uh, Transitarte twenty twenty four, which was a recent festival um, that uh, the government makes here in Costa Rica, and we get a little space there to present the guitar um, workshops. And um, to the right, we have a very um, appealing piece of knowledge. This is by. Um, Mojito was his name. Ulises Mojo was my friend who who's not with us anymore. But he presented um, the world with this nice, very um, modern view of ecology. Ecology was written in the language of military. It was military war against, you know, insects versus ants and. It was all military described, but we've found other means of exploring harmonious ways of understanding the forest. And this is very, very inspiring. Um, if we find this um, different perspective, then we change our point of view. And this helps a lot in the means of finding um, solutions to, to other aspects in life. So we want a harmonious world where everyone collaborates and we participate in celebrating the convergence of disciplines. It is a pleasure to be able to use art and science in daily life. So we would positively use this and interconnect our society and that's exactly what we are doing here so um i would like to to hear you open up the dialogue to 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 hear how do you see this interplay between science music and art in your life comments come on This was beautiful. I want to know yeah. more about um, biomusicology. Sure. You know, sure. bio art, right? When you create uh -huh. art, you using, you know, biological materials and such. Biomusicology is what? 
sorry to scroll like this, but I have a reference here to biomusicology directly. Okay. This is where I first found it. And it's, um, it was a, a gathering, a convergence that happened in the year 1998 in the University of Costa Rica. There were philosophers, scientists, and, and the musicians discussing on some of the topics about the origins of musicality or the origins of music. And it's a series of, of investigations. I later talked to Don Julian Monge and, and he sent me some more information on this biomusicology, but it is it is not very it's not very popular still. Mm. Mm -hmm. but you can see look at those examples below these are birds uh, long exposition pictures of birds but they are waves so um, we can see everything as wave patterns even the mm -hmm. the atoms are not exactly atoms they are wave function probabilities that are happening there so yes um, I've seen more about biomusicology from the Jazz Educational Network of the United States. They, I saw a, a talk presented on bird music recently from them. Mm. What else? Come on. <laughs> Hi, this is fascinating. Um, I absolutely love what you're doing. I feel like a babe in the woods listening to you. Um, there's so much that I feel um, I, I write music and do sound design and fine art photography. And I'm here in South Florida. So I'm out in the Everglades a lot and have recently, it keeps coming up that I want to do more with the sounds that I hear when I'm in the Everglades. Um, that's what really talks to me, especially when I photograph at night and I'm set up and I'm photographing the Milky Way. And then I hear the patterns and I, hear the rhythms and I hear everything and I almost forget about the photography because really I think to core for me sound is what's always driven uh, a lot of what I do so everything you're talking about I feel like a kid in a candy store and want to learn more about what you're doing and how to incorporate some of that um, perhaps be able to have the plants help write some of the music and do things like that. So I would love to learn more about where um, maybe we can connect to maybe um, learning about how to start that process. Of course, I'll be. I'll make sure to to give a contact at the end of the of the talk. But yes, um, for example, my model of the guitar stickers has the the Milky Way, and it's a Gaussian pattern that helps you mr merrick is very interesting um he was he's the writer of the interference book a grand scientific music theory of things and um he was a programmer of uh, meta searchers so he used gaussians to count everything the number of cars the amount of hairs in a head you know, the number of droplets that fall during a rainfall. So um, this, this harmonic interference pattern, I adopted it to the guitar. And I, I use um, uh, Oh, let's see. It's... Oh, no. Oh, here it is. So the Milky Way comes in this line. Uh, um, yes. And then the 12 tones are the 12 constellations. And it's a map of the universe that turns that turns into a, a, a game of playing the guitar. I think you're bringing visibility to what I feel. And that to me is, is pretty exciting. Um, I... I, I I really feel like I need to get to the next step with this though. So I, I definitely want to connect. Sure. Thank let's you. let's do it. RG, have you have you met this concept? Dinergy is a concept I've found mm -hmm. very relegated. It's um censored, if we can say that. 
because it is not present in, you know, you get, go Google it and it'll say, mm -hmm. did you mean synergy? And the energy was this particular um, expression of connecting the visuals and, and wave patterns through this um, trigonometry study. And it's very interesting because um, these patterns are very resonant in nature. The, the helicon butterflies I used to study when I was a kid, they happen to be able to fly better because they have five proportions of fifths in their wings rather than just having the first octave and fourth and fifth like some other simpler ones do. So I found that it was very interesting to to notice those capacities of of you know of, of how do you say ascending into harmonious levels so this concept is very interesting because you will find that this is a good means of of connecting that for example plants have infrasounds and insects have ultrasounds so um uh, there are um ranges in which you can um, translate their music and that could also be interesting, Dave. Oh, I think so. Um, right now, my thoughts are to use the electrical impulse from them based on the energy and how they're reacting to what's around them. And right now, my only way to, in my simple way of thinking, is to convert that to MIDI and then allow MIDI to drive other instruments and things like that. So that, that's kind of where my thought process, but I'd love to see maybe a little more of organic because the patterns you're talking about that we see visually when you showed the birds or that's all around us. And that, you know, I'd like to capture and tap into that a little bit more. Pilotaxi, pilotaxi, pilotaxia in Spanish is the study of leaves proportions. So I've also correlated this to the formation of chords and the formation of other um, musical, for example, chord progressions that might be of interest. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness, yeah. You're making my head go. This is the idea. <laughs> Here, look at this. This is um, a philosopher's stone by a guy called Isaac Newton. So. This was the very famous scientist. And so it's written in the language of music of the spheres. There's the translation of planet to tone that um, I also like to explore in my instruments. And here we have um, a periodic table to the right of the year 1618 with those um, symbols as well. And you can tell that the same pattern of Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, so Venus, Mercury, and Luna. I, I saw it in my ukulele and I saw it in the in the in the periodic table. I, I totally knew that this was coming from this, right? Um periodic tables come from harmonic knowledge. This was known in Newland's chemistry or many other chemists know it and applied it. So if we apply it, we get better results. It's mathematical. So, um, any other comments, questions? I have one have um, thought. Go oh, go ahead, Carolina. You go ahead. I'll come. I um, what's interesting to me, Felipe, and I it's just a thought because it's not. It just came to me as you were talking. Um, not only just blowing my mind with everything you said, it made me feel like I should honor all the everything that resonates within my body and bring it out because I totally resonate with music and the, you know, like what comes from within. So you've given me almost like permission and a little bit more understanding of myself in order to be more free. So thank you. But the thing I was thinking about um, as you were talking is that like the classical music, the Handel Messiah, all of those things that the one thing I always loved as a growing up as a child and being within like, you know, growing up within religion, the most, the thing I loved about the, it the most was the 
the music. So in one way, like, you know, um, religion incorporated it in a sense, but also limited it. And I want, I want, because they limit, you know, in reference to the creative spirit and people being themselves, you have to be conformative. And so I would like to know your thoughts on that, if you would like to share them. First of all, this you mentioned about um, giving yourself permission is a key element. I tend to tell this to my students and everyone around this because this is something that society um, does, does not provide us usually. So it was occulted. And one of the clear um, examples we can find is the Rosalind Chappelle. This this um and many many more other uh churches and, and and buildings that have this architecture of the scales and musicality embedded into them show that this was a a very studied field of knowledge in the in the religious spheres they were very aware of this and the proportions of the body they were very aware of this and and the and the proportions of the size of the church and the places where they um, located the the singers. So um, yes, it, the the occultation of all this knowledge, um, limited science, limited arts, limited um, human capacities in many ways. And part of these limits is the um, um, super specialization of things. As an ecologist, I was able to see things all together because I was used to that. I could see people only studying butterflies or only paying attention to um, uh, fireflies or whatever little insect. And I used to comment with my uncle, hey, um, why don't they ask some other questions? And he, he he said to me at some point, it is it is a matter of specialization and de-specialization. If we get too specific, uh, our narrow, um, what do you say, range is is very narrow. But if we if we broaden our spectrum, then we can see more things, and maybe both ways of knowledge are important. I have been also trying to find other means of the classic um, critical thinking they gave us. Critical thinking leaves people in negativity and it's not exactly the most harmonious points of all. There are good aspects of critical thinking, you know, detecting critical points, being able to, to find the the important results, all of that is crucial. But I think that we should aim to another um, paradigm that could be harmonious thinking, right? Or harmonious intelligence. And this would definitely help to, um, to foster our hemisphere connection in the brain to connect both hemispheres. We use um, science and art and this is also shown in research of people who practice the music, right? So it's it's a great um thing to to embrace, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Felipe, for this wonderful I like, presentation. I like your comment. So we're not done yet. We still have a lot to go through. But uh before we conclude, I, I want to let you all know that next Monday we have an open floor for brainstorming with Artivism. Anyone that would like to join in, just zoom in. We'll have the link on the uh, Artivism website. And we'll have, as you can come, go, ask some questions, stay as long as you like. Um, you know, we can break out in sessions if you have someone that you would like to connect with and if they're there. But uh, just inviting you all next Monday, April 1st at 4.30. Also, remember that all past and upcoming events can be found at the website that is www.adelphi.edu slash artivism. 
you can also follow us on Instagram at Artivism for Share Humanity or simply Google Artivism Initiative. The YouTube channel also uh, is for the number four shared humanity, um, the cipher, right? Not the, the spelling of it. Also, if you like to participate, we have a couple of, and another one that is about um, if, investing your time to spread joy. And that will be the most venue exhibition being held here at, at the Delta University and at um, the Offit Gallery at Gottesman's Libraries at Columbia University. The Both of them will be also at the landing page. You can just submit your work through there. And it's all kinds of work. It can be uh, poetry, it can be musical, it can be of visual arts, or also performance as in dance. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach us out. You'll find the email uh, at the website. And now, please enjoy Mr. Felipe for uh, the remaining of the presentation that we have today. If you have more comments or questions, and I also want to take a little shout out here to Rialengo that's in the house. Uh, they also presented previously with Artivism, and I'm so happy to have all this Costa Rican crew uh, joining and sharing all of your experiences with the global network of Artivism. Thank you again, Pura Vida, mil gracias por todo el apoyo siempre. Um, Mr. Murillo, yeah. Yes, I, I like to do a, a final comment, please. Okay, I, I, I am dedicated to engineering and architecture, and I have reflected on this conference. In short, architecture is considered one of the fine arts due to its ability to combine creativity, aesthetic, functionality, and cultural expression in the creation of, of built environments that are appreciated and enjoyed as work of art. Congratulate Felipe, uh, congratulate Felipe their experiences, their, their experience, experiences and research that prove that prove that although science is not traditionally considered an art. There are aspects of scientific practice that have scientific qualities in some uncertain contexts. Talk about crea creativity and the ability to inspire and communicate. There is harmony according to what you explained it to me. Thank you very much for your conference. Thank you, Don Orlando. Yes, Don Orlando and I, um, usually work in themes of smart cities and um back in the days it was called harmonious cities back in 2008 this agenda was the harmonious cities and this is very interesting topic right it's all encompassing of of human human endeavors and so it's also very very inspiring thank you for your kind words don orlando thank you And I want to bring out what Mr. Murillo was mentioning, that it's science is not considered an art. You heard that? Huh? But yet, uh, yeah. as we saw here, it's all art. Huh? How contradictory of that, right? <laughs> Indeed, education is an art as well. And we are also tend to be forgotten of those of those key aspects. Anything else? Well, thank you all for your attention. And um, I leave you here with RG. Thank you, Dr. Thank, RG. And thank, thank you, you everyone you. for the opportunity. Yes, the RG. Thank you. This was great. This was uh, a lot to think about. I mean, I love, you know, uh, art and science, the relationship of, you know, what it was in the past, how it broke, to, you know, apart, how it's back together again. Um, it's just, it's, it's great. It's, it's a beautiful uh, subject journey. Uh, I do want to learn more about the uh, biomusicology again. That sounds so interesting. Um, why, you know, why, why do we have such, I guess, such huge egos that we think only we can appreciate and create music, right? And not everything else around us. 
you know, flowers, plants, trees, the wind, you know, the sea, insects, you know, it's, it's all music in the end, right? Um, thank you so much, Felipe. Uh, any other questions or comments? Felipe, if you'd like, you can put your um, email in the chat or a way for um, the team here to contact you. I know Mr. Rosenthal wanted to connect with you, um, as did Zubin, I believe. Um, or you can just email us at artivism at adelphi.edu. You know, tell us who you would like to connect with and we will do so. Carolina, your takeaway. Yes. Oh, wow. Well, and mine is around, you mentioned uh, closer to the beginning of the conversation, the damage of curriculum, right? And how you are learning process, right? How would you approach uh, So the screen froze, but I think I can, you know, ap approach the question with with what I heard. I've recently been working on Waldorf education, and this is integrating lots of curriculum. So uh, what I used to teach, for example, the English language through music and the connection of nature is storytelling mm -hmm. the most, right? Storytelling is one of the great um, tools that we have right. that enable us to share these knowledge. And it's very universal and it works for all ages. And if we if we have good stories, we're able to share our great knowledge. So I think this is one of the ways that we could address this. But I, I absolutely know that we um need a revolution in the aspect of curriculum because we need a holistic paradigm right a harmonious one and one that for example in costa rica they use transversal axes um and these are topics that are all encompassing in the curriculum so they have for example um um environmental education is one of those and people generally have a, a a basic knowledge of environmental education in Costa Rica, but I think that the true the true transversal axis of 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 the branches of knowledge is musicality, and if we use it correctly, we're able to to integrate the curriculum in many ways that um I we cannot even think about at the moment, but are um very um opening towards the the visions that we are having now you can see this example of of science having now biochemistry or biophysics or physical chemistry and combinations of subjects that were once alchemy and that um were unifying we unified in the in the music of the spheres and and some of the ancient ways of knowledge um Coming back to that would be great. Okay, and now we go to the takeaway. As you know, here in Artivism, we have the, the, the tradition of closing each session with a key takeaway. And here's the question. What will be your key takeaway for action from your presentation today? Well, um, since I came prepared for this question, and here it is written, here it is written for us to read it and and contemplate it. Um, but yes, we have to embrace our unique capacities to enrich this collective narrative. We have to foster collaboration and dialogue across diverse disciplines. Utilize our creative expression as a catalyst for positive impact. Recognize that our contributions form part of an ongoing evolving story. Express gratitude for each individual's role in shaping this collective journey and strive to create a harmonious symphony of change and consciousness together. 
beautiful, beautiful. And I say all of us here vote for a part two, definitely, right? Uh, stay tuned. We look forward to more. Thank you to Philadelphia Universities, um, Sing for Hope. We also want to thank Godelman's Library, Teachers College at Columbia University, of course, Professor Argia Galarakis, and our presenter today, Mr. Felipe Vega, and all of you for being our audience today. Thank you. We'll see you next time here in our division. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye bye. Looking forward to another part, part two, Felipe. Get ready. <laughs> yes. In the fall. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Take everyone. Care. Thank you. It was beautiful. Bye. -bye. Bye. Fantastic. Thank gracias, you. Felipe, muchas gracias. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much.